Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for being with me once again for a briefing on a significant case. And I should say Happy Halloween. I have today with me Mark Glass, who is the Commissioner of FDLE, Brian Haas, who is our State Attorney in the 10th Judicial Circuit, Susan Lopez, who is a State Attorney in the 13th Circuit, and our Attorney General, Ashley Moody. We're here to talk about an investigation that we all work together. And truly, it's the only way we can appropriately do these investigations. We were also joined by the Hillsborough Sheriff's Office, which assisted us, and the Florida Highway Patrol, which assisted us, and the Federal Homeland Security, which assisted us. And this was the single largest single largest, let me say that again, investigation and seizure of fentanyl in the history of Polk County. Now the sad part about it is I was here just a few months ago saying this is the largest seizure of fentanyl in the history of Polk County. Listen folks, this stuff is killing us and my colleagues are going to give you the details about that but I want to give you an overview. And this this just rings all of the bells. So it being Halloween, you know, it's trick or treat. They tried to treat us with fentanyl and we tricked them with an arrest. And we are here to give you Juan Manuel Guaterres Medina Sr. He's 56 years of age. Juan Manuel Guaterres Jr. Medina Jr., he's 25 years of age, and Roberto Roca, who's 55 years of age. Let me explain what happened. We went undercover. Our detectives are simply the very best. And we met with Roberto Roca in Bartow. He showed up on time. Did you hear that? I mean, for those of you that are watching this, that understand undercover drug investigations, no drug dealer shows up on time. I mean, it's just genetically inclined. So this guy shows up as he's supposed to. We can't determine his alien status. But he delivered to us one kilo of cocaine, and that was on September the 14th in Bartow. Then on September 16th, we got this kilo from Manuel. Then Roberto showed up on September the 16th with three more kilos. So now we've got four kilos of fentanyl. And this fentanyl is mixed with methamphetamine. It's stamped into pills. This is really pure meth. So the investigation's underway. We met with Roberto again on October the 5th and made a partial payment. They were fronting this dope to us and had never met us before. Did you hear that? That's how fluid and how much of this dope is around. And for those that are familiar with the dope world, normally you don't float kilos of fentanyl, meth, cocaine with someone you just started doing business with, but they did. During this time, we're having conversations and we figure out this is Sinaleo cartel dope. And it came from Sinaleo to Compton, and then it came to Polk County straight out of Compton. So as the investigation went on, Juan Sr. left to go to Compton to pick up some more drugs. Now we followed him around in Compton, and he went from there north towards San Francisco, and he came back. In the meantime, we have a warrant for his arrest, a first-degree felony, 25-year minimum mandatory, 30-year sentence. So we worked with the sheriff's office in Los Angeles County, and we said, hey, his phone's pinging in this house. We've got surveillance. Our guys were there surveilling. We also had Homeland Security there with us. They wouldn't knock on the door. Did you hear me? The Los Angeles Sheriff's Department would not knock on the door. They said, hey, 
We're glad to help you if we find him on the streets. If we catch him driving, give us a call. We'll be all over it. We don't knock on doors. I don't understand what that's all about, but I can understand that if that is their standard policy, we now have another example of why the felons own California, the dope smugglers own California. But they made a mistake when they came to Florida because we knock on doors. We arrest people. So on the 18th, Juan Sr. is coming back and when he gets into Florida in Swanee County, in Swanee County, the Highway Patrol stopped him for us where we arrested him. Now they're in a panic. He's locked up. By the way, we have an ice hold on him. Did I mention that he's here illegally from Mexico? And he's been deported several times. He's got a long history with Border Patrol. And he's here again, and he's bringing poison to kill people in the United States. So he's under arrest. They're freaked out. They need money. So anyway, our undercover guy is still cool undercover. And Juan Guterres Medina Jr. delivers us six more kilos on October the 20th in Hillsborough County. And then on October the 25th, we, along with the Hillsborough Sheriff's Office and the FDLE, arrest him. Now, what's important to po point out is Commissioner Mark Glass and I have discussed this the entire time, and they're going to give you the details that I have left out about the funding. But FDLE was with us every step of the way. But I want to point something out clearly. No one of us can do this by ourselves because it quickly left Polk County when you're talking about smuggling this much drug. When you understand how deadly this drug is, when you understand that that 10 kilos can overdose and kill 5 million people, you see, because it takes 2 milligrams two milligrams to overdose and kill someone. When you understand that the drug dealers don't give a red cent about your life, they're there to make money. You understand how dangerous this is. Now you add to the mix that there is a very violent, deadly Sinaloa cartel involved in this that's bringing the drugs up. They're bringing them here with Juan Jr. and Juan Sr. who are here illegally. In fact, Juan Jr. was removed and tried to enter the country four days later after his removal and somehow got back here again. But of course, if he gets to California, nobody's paying any attention out there because in California, they think more of drug traffickers and criminals than they do of honest law-abiding citizens. So the case goes on. It's still under investigation. There are ice holes on father and son now for whatever good that does. But we have the power team here today. I thank our Attorney General Ashley Moody from the bottom of my heart. I'm introducing her first to speak. She is the one that brings us all together. She is the one that's there when it's time to work and keep this people of the state of Florida safe. You see, we saved lives, lots of lives, a ton of lives, because we took this drug off the street. General? Thank you, Sheriff. Today is Halloween, and it is certainly a, a scary announcement that we are making today, because today is not just about Polk County, although your amazing sheriff Grady Judd and the hardworking men and women with him and with FDLE probably saved a bunch of lives here in Polk County. That's the reality of it. But today is an announcement that involves some scary individuals, not only within cr operating criminal enterprises within the United States, but originating in Sinaloa, Mexico and the Sinaloa cartel. The reality is when folks talk about our wide open border, and we talk about the scary people traversing our border. 
As a federal judge said in a case that we won here out of Florida that the border is now nothing more than a line in the sand, there are scary people just freely walking back and forth over that border. I've been there personally, repeatedly, and I've watched it with my own eyes. And it's not just scary people, it's drugs that will kill you. And when I say that, parents, please be advised, this is a moment to talk to your children about what is happening in our country and the realities that they are now going to face in our communities. Because if you had a doubt, there should be none any longer. Fentanyl is here and it is killing Floridians. And I thank so much uh, for law enforcement for, for stepping in the gap when our leaders are not sealing off that border as they should. The people that are stepping on those front lines and doing the dirty work are our law enforcement men and women. And they will tell you this stuff is dangerous. When they go in and try to arrest someone or seize fentanyl, it can kill them. And they are grieving as well as they watch people in their communi communities pass and die from preventable harm. And so we thank Sheriff Judd, we thank Commissioner Glass, we thank everyone involved for stepping into the breach and protecting Floridians. And when Governor DeSantis and our law enforcement leaders send people to the border to help those there trying to intercept those coming across, they are doing that to protect the men and women and children in Florida. Here's the reality. In this one case, originating in Sinaloa, Mexico, into the United States and right here into the heart of Florida, Polk County, Florida, five Five million people could have died as a result of the seizure of 10 kilograms of fentanyl. And this is very pure fentanyl. Now let me put that in perspective to you. That's enough to kill every child in the state of Florida. They seized enough fentanyl that could kill every child in the state of Florida. The fastest growing demographic of those dying to fentanyl overdose are children under the age of 14. This is a, a, such a significant case. This could have harmed so many people in Florida. And so this is not just about this Polk County. This is about our nation. This is about our state. This is about mitigating the harm to our children and our community members. And I thank Governor DeSantis and our legislative leaders as well, who had the forethought to dedicate specific resources to investigations in cases just like this. In this past legislative session, I was so proud to stand with Governor DeSantis when he said, we're gonna allocate resources to law enforcement investigations targeting fentanyl poison peddlers. And that this is the first case as a result of those grants. So, Congratulations goes to Sheriff Grady Judd and the Polk County Sheriff's Office. This is a major victory, not just for this county, but for our state. And it shows when you give resources to the men and women of law enforcement to do their jobs and protect our state and protect our citizens, it works. And so when you see nonsense policies in other states and other cities that are just imploding, like how can we distribute more drug paraphernalia programs, drug vending machines, open air drug markets. The contrast to that nonsense is the state of Florida. Because we know in order to stop this, in order to protect our citizens, you have to go after the head of these organizations and cut off the head. And you have to put them in jail for a long time. These folks that Grady Judd was pointing out will face significant drug charges. And at the same time, while we will be aggressive and we will be forceful in going after those murderous individuals, by the way, these folks, and I don't know if I didn't hear this, I'm sorry, there was some indication that when they were just packaging these drugs, when they were just transporting them, people were passing out and they had to be revived with Narcan. So they are selling this stuff in our communities knowing that it could kill people. They are murderers. They are, they are injecting poison in our communities. So we have to be forceful, determined, focused, aggressive, 
going after them, and we will. It sets us apart from other places in this nation that are on a downward spiral. But what we will also do in Florida is focus on how do we help those that are struggling? How do we help those that have become addicted? And I would implore on this Halloween, at, with this announcement, anyone that has found themselves suffering from drug addiction, even if it hasn't been to fentanyl, fentanyl is now in every drug that is on the market. And it is being put into drugs, and people are ingesting it unwittingly, and they're dying. So if you've ever thought about getting help, in Florida, we've dedicated resources. You can go to um, treatmentatlas.org and find a place where you can get help based on where you are, based on your individual circumstances. I would implore you to take advantage. We've made it easy to do, and we've dedicated significant resources to recovery. So again, uh, thank you so much to Sheriff Judd and to all the men and women of law enforcement. I was able to personally meet and thank those that are going in and disrupting these organizations. It's hard work, it's dangerous work, not only because of the drugs involved, but because of the people involved. And the state of Florida owes you a debt of gratitude. Thank you so much. Thank you, General. In fact, you know, in most of my press conferences, we bring the dope here but we have only photographs of the dope. It is immensely dangerous just to do hand-to-hand -hand undercover transactions of this drug because just the dust can be a fatal overdose. So they literally risk their life just to buy this. And you were right. One of the folks, senior here, the leader of the pack, said on one occasion out in Compton when he was packaging up dope, they had to call paramedics and use the AEDs, as he said, in order to revive him. And on another occasion, while he was packaging dope, he collapsed and he woke up the next day. But I have with me Mark Glass. Mark Glass has been our commissioner for just over one year, and he called me with some great news. He says, Grady, he said, we have more resources that was created by the legislature and Governor DeSantis. I can tell you Governor DeSantis has shown time and again that he's going to protect law enforcement and he's going to protect and have the backs of the people who keep the folks in the state of Florida safe. Florida is a safe state. It is the only safest state in the union of large, large states. Listen, folks, this is huge for us. What the governor and the legislature did, and Mark Glass led the charge. FDLE was with us every step of the way. We could not have done this investigation without the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. So I'll turn it over to Commissioner Glass. Thank you, Sheriff. Appreciate it. Thank you. One of the best part of my job is, as a commissioner, is seeing the life-saving work that our law enforcement community does every day. And as you just heard from the Attorney General, that's what happened here, life-saving work. These agents and deputies went in and they tracked this stuff, this terrible, terrible, toxic stuff. And I believe, Attorney General, you said it best one time, weapons of mass destruction. So, and I agree with that because of what it can do to our neighborhoods, what it can do to our children, what it can do to our society. This has no place in the state of Florida or in the United States or anywhere in the world, if you ask me, other than medical. So with the help of uh, Sheriff Judd, I did come to him and asked him uh, to let him know that we had this program. And uh, I will tell you, this is a marks a, a special milestone for public safety because these are the first arrests in our state using the, F, the uh, SAFE grant program. And what is SAFE? SAFE is short for State Assistance for Fentanyl Eradication. And this program provides money and for local law enforcement agencies and their investigators to root out fentanyl and drug traffickers. So, and this is exactly the type of case that Governor DeSantis had in mind when he signed that safe grant into legislation. So uh, this money could be used for investigation techniques, overtime, and other things that these departments so desperately need to do these type of long-term investigations. Now, the governor understands that investigations into drug trafficking organizations could be very expensive, expensive and also cost prohibitive uh, for some agencies. And this is what this grant is made for. 
and it's easier to arrest low-level street dealers, uh, but much more time-consuming and dangerous and costly to investigate entire organizations. Now I want to thank Governor DeSantis and our lawmakers for their uh, support of the SAFE program and also uh, firsthand, um, I know this is just first of many cases and there's more in the hopper, so uh, I'm hoping to have more of these, these type of events with the sheriff and the attorney general and the governor. But I'm going to tell you, never has been a time when shutting down a drug trafficking organization has been more important. We have open borders, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't noticed that. Now, I had the privilege and the honor to fly out and look and be at the border uh, with Sheriff Judd from Polk County, the Attorney General, and the Governor. And uh, we were able to stand there on the border and see how porous our borders are and what's actually going on there. We actually, actually had the opportunity to have a set of binoculars looking out through the, through the big fence and looking out in the distance and seeing a fentanyl factory in Mexico run by this cartel that you just saw this 10 kilos come from. We actually saw the place. And that shows you how close they are to the border and how brazen they are just to cross it over at any time. But let me give you a little idea. And the medical examiners from the Florida Drug and Deceased Persons Report. Now, we're talking about usually six to a months to a year behind on the data, on the data sets. But medical examiners determined there are more than 7,000 drug-related deaths in six months. 7,000. 7,000. I mean, think about that. 7,000 people in Flor Floridians are not, in six months, were gone due to drug-related deaths with fentanyl. That's a lot. I mean, any other time we would consider that a, a, an attack, a war on our, on our populace. So this, this drug is terrible. It's killing more people than we can shake a stick at. And um, it's more potent than heroin, heroin. And they don't care. They'll put it in Xanax, Adderall, and counterfeit prescription pills, which is getting a lot of our youth. Uh, they're thinking they're stamped and they're done well and they're, they got it from grandma's cabinet and they're, they're going to use it and sell it. And they're actually, they're stamping it. And you sometimes can't even tell what you got. And you don't know the mixture of it. And it can kill you in just a moment. Now, we're so lucky in Florida to have dedicated law enforcement officers that we met today that were working this case with my FDLE agents and officers like uh, Sheriff Grady Judd. His leadership in this, in this great county, in Polk County, is amazing. And it, it outreaches beyond Polk County. It reaches all throughout our state and our nation. And I'm thankful for his friendship, and I'm also thankful for his brave men and women that work for his office to be able to do what they have done in working with uh, my special agent in charge, Mark Brunel, and my FDLE agents, being able to put this type of stuff and uh, to stop it from getting to you and your families and your local communities. Now, I'm also very thankful for everything we've been able to do over the years, uh, working with the different departments, but uh, I want to, this is a, reach out to all law enforcement entities. I want you to take advantage of this SAFE program. There is funding in there, working with our agents, and if you need to know more about it, you can call Sheriff Judd. He can tell you how great the program is. Uh, please reach out to that, and we we'll also, too, just get with your local FDLE, and we'll be able to help you and walk you through it. But this is here. The Governor DeSantis signed us into legislation, and he is adamant about eradicating fentanyl in our great state. And thank you, Attorney General, for your support in this. And, uh, we appreciate everything you do for us, too. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you, sir. Next, we're going to hear from two of our state attorneys. My state attorney, Brian Haas, as, as I stand up here and say, he's simply the very best state attorney, but I guess I've got two great state attorneys <laughs> the best today. No matter how much work we do, if it weren't for these great state attorneys prosecuting the case, then nothing would happen. And Brian Haas and I work hand in glove every day, and that's how it should be between law enforcement agencies and the state attorney who's the prosecutor. His team is awesome. I couldn't be more proud of Brian and the 10th Judicial Circuit because we go after bad guys. And that's why crime in the unincorporated area of Polk County is at a 51-year low. We couldn't do it without the prosecutor, without the prosecutors, without these offices. They're the ones that ultimately keep the state of Florida safe by making sure that the very violent, the very dangerous criminals go to prison and remain in prison. 
Mr. Haas. Thank you, Sheriff. I think this case is really an example of the crisis that we have in our country, but it's not about a faraway place uh, at a border somewhere uh, a great distance from here. It's right here in our community. And this shows that the drugs are making it here and they're having an impact on our citizens. You know, this morning I started my day speaking to some high school students. It's actually my favorite part of the job, getting to, to work with kids and, and talk about their future and, and inspire them. And as I'm standing here, I can't help but think about these drugs and the intended target. And I believe it was kids just like the ones I spoke with this morning. And thankfully, these drugs will not reach there. But we know that this fight goes on. And these kids have such a promising future. They are our future our, of the community um, who have all kinds of great plans for, for ahead. But if they uh, get a hold of these drugs, it's not going to be that way. So uh, this is real impact on real people. And um, I'm so honored to be the state attorney of the Tenth Circuit and to have the partnership that we have with Sheriff Judd. Uh, and then you look at a case like this where we have our, our state law enforcement partners and our attorney general. Um, what a great team to do the best we can to stop these um, drugs from coming into our community. And the last thing I'd like to say is um, a shout out to our law enforcement agents who work these cases. Um, they're the ones that are putting in the, the work that can be such a grind and it's just flat dangerous. And they're missing things with their family, important events that go on. They put these things first, it's priority, and it's because of them and their dedication that we are able um, to have these cases. So it's an important moment. The case uh, goes to the courts from here. And uh, another great thing about the state of Florida is we have great laws. And our legislature and our governor have been uh, very careful to make sure that we have strong sentencing uh, in cases like this, mandatory minimums. And I'm so thankful for that because that really, really helps us um, when it comes time to um, put these people where they belong and that's in Florida State Prison for a very, very long time. So I uh, appreciate the opportunity to speak to you all today. Thank you, Chair. Let me introduce to you Susan Lopez, the State Attorney for the 13th Circuit, which is Tampa and Hillsborough County. She's made a remarkable difference in a short period of time. I was blessed that I was invited to be there when the governor appointed her as the State Attorney. And what we've seen with the Honorable Lopez is her and her team going after the violent people, the bad people, certainly the people that were leaking across the county here committing crimes for us. She understands that nothing is more important than the safety and security of not only the people of the state of Florida, but specifically Tampa and Hillsborough County. People are alive in Tampa and Hillsborough County today because Mrs. Lopez is your state attorney. And she is going after people in a team effort, in a team manner with all of us to make sure that we're all safe. And she has some of these cases because working with FDLE in Hillsborough County, some of our arrests occurred there. So, Susan. Thank you, Sheriff. Sheriff is right, this is a team effort. Crime knows no boundaries. It doesn't know where the county line is, so it's important for all of us to work together. I wanna to first applaud the, applaud the Florida Department of Law Enforcement and all of our state lawmakers for creating SAFE program. It's directly addressing one of the biggest public health emergencies that we have, and that is fentanyl. Plain and simple, fentanyl kills. SAFE is saving lives. A piece of fentanyl the size of a grain of sand is enough to kill one person. One kilo of fentanyl has the potential to kill a half a million people. These criminals that we've learned about today were trafficking enough of this poison, and that's exactly what it is, poison, to kill millions of people in the state of Florida, not only in Hillsborough County or Polk County, but all across the state. And through the diligent work of our brothers and sisters in law enforcement who put their lives on the line every day in everything that they do, I do not doubt that many, many lives have been saved. We've heard a lot about the border this morning. We always hear about illegal fentanyl coming in from the border, but few of us think that it will actually make it to our doorstep. I'm here to tell you, and you've heard this morning, that fentanyl has made it to Hillsborough County and it's made it to Polk County. In fact, in Hillsborough County in the last five years alone, the number of fentanyl-related cases 
has jumped by 1,300%. Why is that? Drug traffickers are using fentanyl to cut or to mix in with other street drugs. It's cheaper to make, and they can then therefore turn a bigger profit. And unfortunately, fentanyl is killing mothers, fathers, brothers, and sisters, our friends, our families, our coworkers. In Hillsborough County in 2022, we had 226 fentanyl-related deaths. That is why my office and Mr. Haas's office are taking such a strong stance against these drug traffickers and drug dealers. The legislature has given us strict laws. Trafficking in fentanyl is a first degree felony punishable by up to 30 years in the Florida State Prison. In an amount 28 grams or more, it is punishable by a 25 year mandatory minimum prison sentence. There is also a $500,000 fine associated with that charge. You've heard from Sheriff Judd that one of these that one of these defendants will be facing a judge and a court in Hillsborough County. That individual sold six kilos, enough to kill well over a half a million people, to one of the agents involved in this case. He is, of course, facing the 25-year mandatory minimum and the $500,000 fine. And we've learned that the fentanyl that he brought into Hillsborough County is the purest of the pure. It's not been cut. It is the highest quality that can be detected by a lab. I want to thank Sheriff Judd, the Polk County Sheriff's Office, the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, and Commissioner Glass and his team, as well as my colleague, State Attorney Haas, because like we said, we're in this together. Crime knows no boundaries. I want to thank them for their investigation and their work to secure these arrests. We look forward to their partnership as we bring justice bring these individuals to justice. And lastly, I wanna thank Attorney General Moody and Governor DeSantis. They put fentanyl at the forefront of what they are addressing right now because fentanyl is in every corner of Polk County, Hillsborough County, and the state of Florida. It has touched every neighborhood, every office building, every school and church, it has touched. So together, in a collaborative effort, we will end the fentanyl crisis in the state of Florida. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I want to show you this one more time. I want to ask you, if since 2018, there were 250,000 murders in this country, what would we as a country be doing today to stop it. We would build a wall 50 foot tall at the border to stop it. But I want you to think about this. Since 2018, 250,000 people have died from a fentanyl overdose in the United States. And yet, we can't get a police agency to knock on a door so we can serve a warrant in Compton today. You think there's a problem? There's a problem. When the rule makers won't back up the cops, the cops quit doing the job the way it should be done. In this state, Governor DeSantis supports us. In this state, we stop drugs from going to, this, to the streets. In this state, we knock on doors. In this state, we keep people safe. And this is evident this morning I also want to thank the federal par partners from Homeland Security who went with us across the United States to help us. But at the end of the day, folks, this is serious. Like we've never seen anything serious before because this drug in that small amount kills you DRT dead right there and dead right now, not dead later not deteriorating your body over time, DRT. And I appreciate our teamwork, but this is Halloween. And I want all the drug dealers to know every day is gonna be Halloween for you. You try to bring these illegal treats in and we're gonna trick you and put you in prison. After all, it's not really a treat, 
It's a trick. Thank you, and God bless you. See you soon. Sure. Yes, ma'am. Um, so this was an international drug operation that you narr narrowed in on in Bartow. Um, were they living in Polk County for a long time, operating in Polk County, or did they kind of jump around? Two of them were living in Riverview in Hillsborough County. Junior was also living in Compton, so they were moving between Compton and Hillsborough County. And our undercover folks, which, as I've told you before, are simply the very best in the business, infiltrated this gang, discovered this huge amount of fentanyl being trafficked, and that's where the investigation began. But understand that Juan Sr. and Juan Jr. are here illegally. They're not supposed to be here. And they're coming across the border with enough drugs to kill 5 million of your children. How's that working? They're killing people. They're killing your children. So at the end of the day, that's why we're all here. And there's a visual presentation here that I want everyone to understand. We're all working together. These are all our kids. We don't want them killing kids in Polk or Hillsborough or Florida or any place else in the United States or the world. But this stuff is deadly like we've never seen in our careers. Yeah, how long they were operating in the river view? We know that they have been in and out of this country since the 90s. And I don't see any gainful employment. You know what I'm saying? So I suspect they've been pushing drugs since the 90s. Fentanyl has just taken off in the last few years, but it's really bad stuff. I'm just telling you right now. And once you come home in the evening and discover your child deceased in the bedroom, it's too late. Every parent across this nation ought to be up right in the face of all of their elected officials going, what are you thinking? What are you doing? How can you make it a misdemeanor to possess these drugs in California or decriminalize them in Oregon? They're killing people, and, and this is the worst of the worst. There is a connection to the Sinaloa cartel. Is it, I don't know, is it proper terminology? Do they work for the cartel or is it, how does that work? Well, I don't think they have former contracts with the, contra with the Sinaloa cartel, but yes, Sinaloa cartel is a group of very dangerous, very violent drug dealers who like, don't have much problem with competition because they just kill them. And then they control the drug cartel. So if you want to sell drugs, in the United States, Sinaloa can help you out. They can set you on a path. And that's what's happened here. This came out of Sinaloa by the cartel, and, it's, and they're moving drugs across this porous border by the metric ton, not just fentanyl, methamphetamine. We had did a deal recently where we were bringing liquid meth over the border by the five gallon bucket. And we had, I think we did 40 or 50 gallons of it. But you know when things change? When the community rises up. Now we are all watching a horrible war where Israel was attacked by the terrorist. Well, there's a silent war here where your children are being attacked by the cartel and the drug dealers, and the end result's the same. Think about it. We've seen thousands of people killed in Israel, and that's horrible. Imagine 250,000 killed in the United States by these folks that are dealing with that kind of drug. That's what's happening. The difference is it's a silent war. It doesn't make noise because there's not a big explosion when the bomb goes off. You just die quietly in your car or at a friend's house or in a street behind a building. And the only way it's going to stop, we can stand up and scream and holler and arrest and prosecute people to keep it at bay. And it, but until all of you in the community recognize we don't want any more of this, it's going to continue. It can be stopped, 
but we got to have some help. So just help a brother and sister out. Get serious about it, okay? Yes, ma'am. How long did the investigation take as a whole, and what was the? Is there a total overall grant from the state program, like the amount that paid for it? You know, interestingly enough, this investigation was quick. We started it in September, so it was some investigations, depending on the complexity of it and the challenges, go on for months and a year or two. This one was wrapped up in less than 60 days, and quite frankly, the governor signing the legislation allowing us to have the safe money allows you to play in an entire different arena. You can go out and buy and get involved in these groups whenever you have the appropriate money and support. And Florida takes it serious. That's why Florida is safe, but it can be safer. That's why California is not safe. And it's going to be less safe as time goes on and the drug use and abuse is there and the cops back away. And that's what we saw. The cops are backing away. And they back away when they don't get support. And there is no support for the cops in California. Just turn your television on most every night and you can see that. Thank you very much. See you all later.